and I teamed up with Whip, who was the admin on the server, so that I could splash Jimmy, and then Whip would run a command behind the scenes on the, you know, behind the scenes stuff, and it would make Jimmy less than a block short. <laughs> So he, I threw it on him, and he generally thought that the potion is what did it. So he's trying to get more of these potions off me, sort of thing. And it was just so funny. And his reaction, it was all on his stream, and it was like one of my favorite moments. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, Skiz, we are back, and we'll get right to it. Today, we are joined by the one, the only, Smallish Beans, a.k.a. Joel, or maybe the other way around. I don't know which one you like to be preferred. Uh, called, uh, Eva's <laughs> fine. Eva's fine. Joel normally is fine, yeah, so uh, Smallish Beans, Joel, whatever. Well, Joel, thank you so much for uh, coming on the, the show. Uh, one of our newest... I'm I'm literally sitting next to both brand new members of Hermitcraft. Skiz on my oh, left. Yeah, that's true. Joel on my right. I got both. Wait a minute. Next to me. This is like Amazing. our actual setup, right? Are you you, you live between <laughs> oh, us yeah. too? Oh yeah. On, on, on yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very true. Physically yeah. located on the server is neighbors as well. So uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we get a chance to uh, get to know each other even a little bit better. Um, Joel, obviously we we know you from working with you on the Life series and now Hermitcraft yeah. as well. But um, you have been a YouTuber. Longer than both of us combined, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> you've, you've been doing really? this YouTube oh, game no. for quite a while, haven't you? It's impressive. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I literally thought I should look that up before I come on. And it is October 2008 when I made this YouTube channel. Uh, I don't have a one before that, which was made in like 2006 or something. So yeah, it's nearly 18 years of YouTube in total. So not to not to oh man, the yeah, not to give away your age, old. but, but <laughs> how old were you when you made your first YouTube video? Well, I'm about to turn 31. So my first one, I think I was probably like 13, like just probably, a kid. Um, yeah, 13. you were yeah, literally it was not just a, a kid. Not a good video, uh, but <laughs> yeah, uh, old school RuneScape. I was 13. This has been like like half my life. So yeah, all I've known is YouTube, really. It's mad. That's crazy. Okay, I definitely like, want to yeah. dig into that for sure. Oh, yeah. oh, well, here's the thing. Do you Did you guys start when there was still the five-star rating system on videos, or were you always on the likes? It was likes. Wow. Was, oh, yeah. that, shows, that shows how like old I am. That It was used to be five-star rating. And uh, favorite instead of like, oh my I gosh. don't know, something else. It was, you know, yeah, it was, it's a long time ago. That's crazy. Okay. So 2008, 13 years old, you upload your first video. What, why? 2006, <laughs> yeah. 2006. Um, why? Yeah. I just started watching a bit of YouTube. I, I played old school RuneScape, which used to be just RuneScape at the time. And I, a friend, I think, showed me like a, a video of some people. And I was like, that looks cool. I reckon I could do that. And I had the whole thing where you download a Hypercam, which always said unregistered Hypercam because I never paid for it in the top uh -huh. right. Uh, and yeah, just made like a couple of stupid videos with some friends uh, on there. The channel's still out there. It's called Mousy Loves Cheese, if you want to go find it. It's nice. awful, but yeah, it's still there. Oh, man. Yeah, so back then, I mean, YouTube wasn't even um, a career. It wasn't pain creators even i don't think there was a partner program yet nope. right so like you were literally just doing it just to just in hopes that people liked your stuff right like that's all all there really yeah. was for it right yeah i don't think the first videos got they've got a lot of views now because i've mentioned them like in like quick q and a's and stuff but the videos at the time probably got like i think top one probably got a thousand views which was actually quite a lot at the time i think because back then like there wasn't even someone who had a million subscribers that was unheard <laughs> of pretty sure Top YouTuber was a guy called Fred. I'm not sure if you know oh, Fred. Yes. Squeaky voice. He, uh, yes, he, I went know to, he went on to like make some movies as well. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh so he was the the top dog at the time, and I think he had about 500k subs. And I think he was one of the first to a million, which is crazy. Him and Smosh used to rule oh, the yeah. world, sort of thing. Wow. But yeah. That's... So yeah, the first videos weren't good, but. Oh, yeah, we just made so, them for a bit of fun with some friends. Well, your main video is rocking like 3.6 million subs. I, you're, you're past, you passed a billion views. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Let's let's go back. I, I, I imagine the answer is a resounding no. If I ask you, could you ever have imagined that you would get here? 
But my question for you actually is, because you belong here, there's no question about that. Are you how much how much are you loving this ride? Because you're just killing it in the YouTube world. I mean, yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, it's it's weird, like you said. Would never have expected it. I've got uh, like when I was first starting out on this channel, started out with Call of Duty videos, and my parents used to turn the internet off. Like, used to literally go downstairs, <laughs> grab the modem, and hide it under their bed at 11 p.m. every night, so I wow. couldn't play any longer. Uh, I've got a funny story about how I made my first, like, got my first paycheck from YouTube when I was about 17 or something. And my dad said like, all right, get back upstairs and go on that blooming computer right now and continue <laughs> on make some uh, more videos. And they stopped turning the internet off at that point as well, which was pretty nice. But yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the ride. Obviously I've met loads of really good friends through this, met my wife through this. So yeah, it's just, it's been crazy. And yeah, still loving it to this day, just having fun with it still. So how long were you doing... Um like Call of Duty, first person shooter type games before you mm. found Minecraft? Mm, good question. I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably say it was about like four or five, four, four or five years. I'd wow. say something like that, maybe six. Quite a while. Yeah, I actually uh, was pretty popular in the Call of Duty scene at the time. Like that was my first sort of like blow up. We did like uh, some like montages of me and a friend of mine where we used Shrek songs. So now, you know, Shrek skin in Minecraft and then uh -huh. human Shrek skin. Um, oh, but wow. yeah, that was, they, they sort of blew up and got a load of views. And I, uh, there was these, back in the day on YouTube, there was these stats you could have on your YouTube channel. So you could have like, uh, if you were a gamer, you're a reporter. Actually, gaming wasn't even one, actually. It was reporter, like artist, musician, sort of thing like that. And I put myself in reporters and I was the number one reporter in the UK, even though I did no reporting. Uh, but yeah, like it used to like you have loads of those stats. And I, I started off, uh, yeah, with some friends from school, just making some Call of Duty videos. They blew up uh, and I was actually like one of the biggest UK, I think I was like the second or third biggest UK Call of Duty YouTuber wow. at the time. Uh, I had more subscribers than Lizzie when I met her, which has now obviously <laughs> changed. Uh, but like, well, I was on 200. And like, I'm not sure if you've seen those videos on YouTube where it's like the subscriber graphs and it compares yes, yeah, like all yeah. the Hermitcraft members. Mine is always like quite early on. I hit like 200,000 subscribers from the Call of Duty stuff, then start falling back again because people started unsubscribing. And then the Minecraft stuff picked up after that. But yeah, like really long time ago had quite a lot of subscribers and it's, it's funny like i get a few big youtubers speaking to me today be like oh i used to watch your call of duty stuff when i was little uh mumbo for one for example wow. oh, really wow. was like you, I, there's if you look on twitter i'm pretty sure there's some tweets from mumbo uh when i quit call of duty youtube videos uh from like 2011 and uh also like stampy long nose i remember when he was like you know at his height of his fame where he was like crazy on minecraft youtube I joined like an Xbox live party and I was like, oh my gosh, this is Stampy Longnose. And he was like, oh my gosh, I used to watch all your Call of Duty videos all the time sort of thing. So really funny, like met like loads of really big YouTubers through that sort of thing. And like, it was a, a bit of a different scene back then, but yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. So when it came to your channel taking off with Call of Duty, was, was it primarily because of the way you were editing videos or were, were you just really good at the game? You know, there's usually you find mm. that where where people will watch mm. somebody because they're very, very skillful at the game and they want to see how do they how do they hit those shots or whatever. And then there's there's the more entertainment side where it's like, wow, I really like the way they cut that video and put the music to it. Would you consider yourself on one side or the other or somewhere in the middle of that spectrum? I'd, I'd say definitely in the middle. I feel like. The way, like at the time, all the Call of Duty montages were all like, you know, sort of heavy rock or like uh, techno sort of, not heavy, not techno, more dubstep sort of music. Whereas my thing was like just songs I like. So like <laughs> songs from the Shrek movies, just songs like my parents used to listen to. Like just some like classic songs sort of thing, which obviously all got copyright striked, but that's another problem. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so like it was a mix of that. I was also pretty good at the game. Uh, played like with the sniper rifle was like, it was called sniping and yeah, did a lot of that. And, uh, yeah, I think it was just a mix of the both. So the editing, I was kind of like, you know, upbeat, a bit different. I tried to try to like stand out sort of thing from uh, everyone else at the time. That's awesome. For sure. So you, okay. That, that, that's a lot. He, I think you had like a, a 
I think he said what four or five years of Call of Duty before he moved into Minecraft, and that's no idea it was that much. That's huge. That's a that's a <laughs> yeah. long journey to pivot like that. So what what brought you into Minecraft? Like who introduced you to that? And how did that start? Uh, I did like a few Minecraft videos in like really early Minecraft. I think it was like before it was even released, sort of thing. You know, when it was in the early beta, oh, sort wow. of thing. You could still buy it. Uh, yeah, that's my thing with Lizzie is like, I bought Minecraft before her. I had it. I can't, I was like, I got it in the alpha sort of thing because of, uh, I'm, I'm sure he's got featured in the, what's it called? The Minecraft 15 years thing recently, a guy called, I can't remember what his full channel name is, but it's David and his series is called X plays Minecraft. I watched his videos and I was just like, what is this game? This is crazy. So me and a few friends made a little uh world together and server which was so hard to do back in the day by the way like we just had no idea what we were doing but we got it working we just messed around in creative and stuff but I, I quit youtube for a while to focus on going back to school and doing some a a levels they're called in the uk because i originally dropped out of school to do youtube and then i thought i'll go back and i just met lizzie at the time and we started like I started like playing a little bit on her world. She had like this server called Zach, which was Zach Scott's server, and she played on it. And I got invited to it, and I did some building on there. Got featured in her video a bit, and I kind of was like, yeah, this is quite fun. Got making my own videos, like just messing around at first. I was also trying to do like other content at the time, like because at the time on YouTube, the biggest sort of content was just like kind of like what PewDiePie did, where it was just you know everything and anything. Like you just upload like this prop hunt game, you'd upload. Mm -hmm all these sorts of games sort of things so i tried that for a bit but minecraft was the one that like kind of really stuck and uh yeah just got making videos of that mainly because of lizzie to be honest i think she was like very encouraging and uh yeah eventually like after i finished uh college or school again i was able just to do it full time luckily which was great what were you going to school for uh so originally i when i went to school we do it so we do GCSEs from like ages up to 15 here and then 16 17 18 you do things called A levels uh, it's like before what you'd call college we call university uh so yeah we i did originally i did mute i did the t worst subjects ever i did music music technology maths and design and technology which is like woodwork which I dropped out of because I just failed maths awfully, <laughs> like like really bad, terrible. Because I was like maths A levels, massive step up, step up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back and I did something that I actually enjoyed a bit more. I did film studies, media mm -hmm. studies, and ICT. There it is. And yeah, yep. really enjoyed those. Yep. Big big film fanatic here. Love yeah. love films. You knew where you were supposed to be. That's that makes perfect <laughs> yeah. sense. And so that let's. Did you do any theater as a young one? Like, what? What? How, why do you? Why are you drawn no. to the entertainment gig? I don't know. I I was very shy when I was a kid, so I did like nothing like on a stage or anything like that. Fear to work. Like, I I I generally didn't really like drama at school, sort of thing. Uh, I don't know what it was like that brought me to. I guess like on YouTube and doing the YouTube videos, the way the way I got popular was the montages, like I said, where you did plays, the edits, the songs, and stuff. So. It's not really any talking in that. It's more just, you know, just showing what, like, the good clips you hit sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah, it was only, like, after a while I built up the confidence, you know, start, you know, talking on the videos. And then I had braces at the time. And because of that, like, I hated the way I sounded because I couldn't pronounce my S's properly. Um, so then I never showed my face ever because I didn't want anyone to see me in braces and I didn't speak as much. But as soon as I got those off, I got a bit more confidence and started, you know, speaking and get a bit more confident and i feel like youtube in general has like helped me so much like just confidence in real life to be honest and speaking to people mm. and stuff because if you, it is mad because like you sit here you speak into your pc and you know a few hundred thousand people watch the video you don't think of that when you're making the videos because that's bloody terrifying <laughs> uh but yeah like it has helped a lot like you know just with everyday life just like building up confidence and stuff which is good have you ever spoken at a public venue of any kind Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've done, you know, we've been to like VidCon and stuff and done like panels in front of like a few okay. hundred, maybe a thousand people sort of thing and like UK conventions. I also like you probably seen used to be in a band when I was a kid when I was about 15 and we played in front of like, you know, a few hundred people sort of thing. 
but I'm at the back on the drums, so it's fine. I don't have to worry about that. It's not like I'm stood up yeah. at the front of the stage. We understand that. That's, yeah. We yeah, saw yeah. some clips of you playing, and and um, you know, a lot of people will be like, "Oh yeah, I I, I know how to drum. I, I do a little, I dabble and stuff like that." And so, um, you know, Skiz and I were pretty like hardcore into drumming in mm. high school and mm. stuff. And so when we hear that, we kind of just think, oh, "Okay, they're gonna just you know, be like Duke Chuck." Duke, check into the simple <laughs> stuff, and then we see you play, and I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, he's no, like he's actually a drummer. Yeah, like he knows what he's doing and is doing amazing drum fills and has a, a feel for the the beat. Like it, you were really good. I was super impressed. So and really, oh, really yeah. young. Yeah, really yeah, young yeah. too. Oh yeah, I was very young when I started. I, I've got. Uh, I talked about this in my Q and A on Hermitcraft. I did recently, but I had a really good teacher. He was actually a drummer in a pretty popular band in the UK called Shed Seven, uh, and they, you know, they got to like. They, they do festivals still and they have like, you know, thousands of people come see them. It's crazy. Uh, but he just did it on the side for a bit of fun. And me and my dad actually started. My dad actually bought the drum kit because he was going through like, you know, midlife crisis sort of thing. <laughs> Need to do something, bought a drum kit. Uh, so he went and bought the drum kit and then we went to get lessons together. And I kind of picked it up a lot quicker, probably because I was younger sort of thing. I was only about 14, 15. So like it really came kind of, you know, a bit more naturally to me than it did to him. And then, yeah, I just like my drum teacher was really funny. Like I'm not sure. I've seen like you guys play and you seem to have like really good stick work and stuff. And like, mm -hmm. I'm presuming you did like some sort of like grading system over there. Did you do that? We had, um, so we were, we were brought up in, in more of the drum core style, uh, like marching <clears throat> band. Drum marching line. So, style, yeah. so they, yeah. they really, uh, teach you rudiments, right? So like, right, you're yeah. like well-trained on the, the, the stick techniques and, and just rudiments and how to stitch all the rudiments together. And so when it comes to sitting down on a drum set, uh, we're able to apply those rudiments and have kind of fast mm. hands and stuff. But that that's like technically uh you know a way of playing where as far as like drum set it, it's a lot more about like feel and how you apply that across the the different drums and, and i think that's yeah. at well, least for me that's where well, i struggle you're, the most. you're right you're right but it's all it's drum set is in general just a different skill set yeah, the yeah. thing that the thing is we our hands because of our classical training it we sound a lot better on a drum set than we actually are we're not <laughs> i like i yeah. really speak for myself i'm i people ask me how i am on drum set i always say i'm fantastically average you know what i mean but i can yeah. sound really good because i got quick hands watching what he was doing at that young age i'm like this kid's got chops yeah, it's a natural yeah. feel for the instrument and, yeah. and like actually yeah yeah it was a pleasure utilizing all the all the different um timbres that you had at, at your disposal so yeah. like it, yeah because we, we just had to worry about one drum basically for the most part of my right yeah, yeah <laughs> so that's like the complete opposite of what i yeah. learned i didn't do any of those like my because my, my drum teacher found those boring he's like he never did grades he had a really strict drum teacher sort of thing when he was younger and he hated it so he was like i'm gonna you know do something different so what we do is we just be like found this song really like the drums on it can you teach us this and he we take it in he'd like listen to it he'd learn it a little bit and maybe sometimes simplify it if it was a bit too tricky sort of thing and then we just learn that song and like practice that song sort of thing which made it like really fun to learn sort of thing yeah um but yeah like he he was really funny because he like like i said didn't have any like classical training really he kind of had like a strict drum teacher who made him do things but he never did a grades like, there's like you can go and sit a grade exam sort of thing and he did he, he, he said about he wanted to do one just for the sake to see if he could do it sort of thing so i think he did a grade six or something it goes up to eight so it's kind of high and he learned like all the pieces he had to play and stuff and he went and played it and did his exam and he said he was more nervous uh, doing that exam in front of one person watching him than he was playing in front of 5,000 people at <laughs> a festival called Tea in the Park. He said it was absolutely terrifying and never did any more after that because it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you still drum at all? Like, do you have a drum set in your house? I, when was the last time you drummed? I, I have a electric kit here i've got a roland kit it is just okay. crumpled up into like you know nothingness at the moment uh but i play with ollie the orion sound and mm -hmm. a couple of other friends my friend joel and joe and we just sort of like we'll go to ollie's and ollie's got quite a good he's very musical so he's got a really good setup and he's got a massive uh what's it called where he plugs up wires into i can't remember what it's called uh but yeah he's got a really good setup so i'll take my electric kit and we'll like learn some songs just for fun we played my 20 my 30th birthday party last year we got like a little pa system and played like four songs which was good fun and then had a little jam afterwards so yeah it's really uh just play for like fun now i don't have a practice or like just play by myself because you know 
just a, I don't know. I get bored yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, I could probably be a lot better if I did put the practice in, but it's just, I don't know. I'd rather be playing Guitar Hero on my PC <laughs> than the drums, to be honest. Say, uh, I'm assuming you don't have a lot of time to, to mess around on the drum set. I mean, no, uh, I, you have got time. I just, I prioritize over stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you have time. I mean, um, just taking a look uh, uh, across your channel, like, it, it seems like you're in a new SMP every, <laughs> every 20 every, minutes. Every, yeah. Every, oh, yeah. yeah, like so you've done a lot of of different um survival multiplayer servers oh. with with your friends over the course of the years. Um yeah. I, I think my biggest question is cuz I've tried to do this before where I had like multiple worlds going on or multiple SMPs mm. even and I found it very difficult to um to bounce between them and, and and like keep my focus on on each one at a time like you you've managed to do that over the course of your career so i want to just kind of hear about what's that experience been like being in, involved in so many different smps mm -hmm. and how do you manage to uh to jump between them because i think currently are you currently are you just in hermitcraft it's just right hermitcraft now? for okay, now so this Good, is yeah, actually the some, somewhat ended, of, a, yeah. of a relief for you it's I nice bet. yeah <laughs> yeah but, it's quite quite chill at the moment yeah, yeah so but how did you manage uh, before when you were jumping between multiples at, at once I don't think I've ever done more than two at once, and like, unless you count the live series as well, which I don't really count as like, you yeah, know, the same yeah. sort of, you do three hours a week, that's fine. Uh, I don't know, it's like, it, if there were two SMPs like Hermitcraft and then just another SMP, which is just vanilla survival sort of thing, I would probably not do it. But because what I did recently was SOS with some of the guys who did Empires and stuff and some new people as well. Uh, it's quite a different sort of uh, format. So I was able to like separate the two quite easy. I use like Hermitcraft as like, so I'm going to do like my big builds and like, you know, interact with all these new people and stuff. Whereas SOS, it's like, it was more like with these challenges every two weeks and I could focus on that a bit more and like just build some a bit more simpler and just cuter. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just quite easy to separate them for me. I feel like if they are different enough, uh, I do also have a hardcore series technically going on right now, <laughs> like a single player one, uh, but I haven't logged into that world for a while. I, st I did some really big projects on that. So they were like, if I go back to that world, I want to come back, you know, like a, a bang and like a big project sort of thing. But uh, I did enjoy doing that because I do enjoy single player a little bit as well, uh, just because you have to do everything I find on like an SMP, you know, like. I don't need to build a creeper farm because, you know, Aoife's got a creeper farm. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, someone else has got a creeper farm. I, on single player, it's like you get different content because you need to build that creeper farm if you want to get like a good supply of rockets or whatever. So I, I find it like easy to separate the two in that way. It does get a bit like stressful sometimes if I uh, do have too many on the go. And I did kind of like prioritize Hermitcraft over SOS. I was doing like a SOS video every two weeks, whereas Hermitcraft, you know, like sometimes twice a week sort of thing, just because it's a little bit selfish in a way, but you do have to think of yourself. And I knew that Hermitcraft <laughs> was going to do better overall sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it, it's, 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 it's tricky, but at the same time, like if they are different enough, I, I don't find it as hard as it would be for two separate SMPs sort of thing. Yeah. That's identical the, SMPs. That's a good shout. Like, like the things that you are doing aren't super similar, the, at least the ones that <laughs> yeah. you have running at the same time. Um, like, uh, well, let's, let's talk about empires for a minute. Empires had oh, yeah. something unique about it and that was, uh, it leaned into at least season two. Uh, leaned into more lore, um, yeah. you know, more more of the the acting and character and things like that. Yeah. Um, what did you uh, What did you like about that? I mean, was that something new to you, being yeah. with, you know, being in character and in playing role yeah, yeah. like role playing and things like that? Uh, kind of, yeah. Like to, in season one, we had like some lore and stuff. We had this whole like guy called Zornoff who was like a devil or some you know m creature that was like attacking the world or whatever and my whole thing was in empire season one just to ignore that because you know i was a bit law phobic <laughs> sort of thing so i didn't really you know focus on law too much in season one i got a lot of comments like why is joel not focusing on the law so i tried to do like what i like to call aggressive law in season two where <laughs> i was just kind of sarcastic with it in a way and just trying to like make f like fun and have just a stupid time with it so i came up with this whole well, Joel character who was like 
really tall and strong and that was my character on that and like everyone else just looked at me and pitied me uh, but i i was I, and i was like yeah joel sure you're tall and strong and i was just like no i am and they're like yeah okay uh, and then yeah like had a lot of fun with that just messing around like doing the floating islands thing uh, but I do like a thing where like I'm like at the st- my first episode I did something like I made this fountain and I threw something in the fountain and then it went into the sky and then I'd show afterwards like guys I, I know this is law but this took me like four hours to do I had to destroy the whole thing build a massive like floating island and uh, it's not just law like it, I did actually do this as like you know breaking the fourth wall yeah. sort of thing uh, but yeah it's just fun messing around that empires was always like just I I never take that sort of law stuff too seriously me and like jimmy especially i I love to mess with jimmy as you guys probably know <laughs> uh but like i he came up with the idea that he wanted to be the sheriff and i was like oh yeah woody from toy story easy that's we i'm gonna make fun of him because he's small <laughs> and then we got we got the my favorite part of like the entire series is probably i just got a splash potion of water and i nicknamed it law potion and i teamed up with Whip, who was the admin on the server so that i could splash jimmy and then Whip would run a command behind the scenes on the you know behind the scenes stuff and it would make jimmy less than a block short so he i threw it on him and he generally thought that the potion is what did it so he's trying to get more of these potions off me sort of thing and it was just so funny and his reaction it was all on his stream and it was like one of my favorite moments because it's just and then he like sued me because i was calling him woody when he i'm disrespecting the sheriff and stuff and it was it was really good just like him pretending to be a toy and him yelling i am not a toy like actual woody <laughs> Built some walls around his base, like Andy's bedroom. Yeah, just had a really fun time with that. It's one of my favorite things. So you went from being what you just said was lore phobic to fully diving in, embracing this. And it sounds like you found yourself in a good spot to where, because a lot of people can take lore to almost a cringe area yeah. right they get too much into yeah. too too serious about it and it's it's oh, not yeah. everybody's cup of tea for sure um well, you know and i i tried to dabble in lore as well and i kind of fell into that space where i couldn't really i, I went too far and it was cringy and i realized that and i had to back <laughs> off so it feels yeah. like uh it feels like you got pretty comfortable with it and we're able to create yeah. some really fun moments and that's you know that's what it's all about especially with SMPs, right? Like creating these kind of moments oh, yeah. that are unforgettable. I, I like I I, I want to go see this now. I want to go find I this. I, <laughs> I want to find this moment where you splashed him with the water and and oh, he must have so knowing Jimmy and the way he reacts to things. Yeah. Oh my like God. I can't I can only he, imagine it was hysterical. Yeah. Jimmy spoke so nicely about me on your podcast when he was on, but I have nothing but praise for Jimmy as well. Like he's so like he brings so much to a server. I don't think people realize how much like Jimmy can bring to a server sometimes Agreed. because he's just like, he's always willing to go along with stuff. He's always willing to be the butt of the joke. And mm-hmm. you know, he always has the best reactions to stuff. Like if I'm doing a prank and it's on Jimmy, I know the reaction is going to be good. So I always target him for that reason. Cause I know it's going to be a great reaction, especially when he uses his face cam. Cause you get to see his actual face <laughs> yep. looking disbelief yeah. sort of thing, which is hilarious. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. So, uh, I got to do this. Okay. And if you want to, you can say pass. Uh-oh. Okay. Joel, Uh-oh. Smallish Beans, how did you come up with that name, buddy? What? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really quite boring. Uh, it was just a friend of mine. We used to call each other Beans at the time. And I thought, that's funny. So I tried to get <laughs> The Beans on Xbox that? Live. Okay. And it was it was gone. It was not taken. So I was like, all right, I can't have The Beans like 149. That's boring. Mm. So came up with small beans and then i tried to get the youtube channel small beans but that was taken by some beading channel which used to mess with beads oh, okay. it's still a youtube <laughs> channel i think it's still if you type small beans it's been taken over by someone else now so it was smallish beans and it was the same for minecraft small beans was taken so it was smallish beans for that and i've sort of just rebranded to smallish beans now to make everything you know cohesive and stuff instead of you know but yeah it's not not really that interesting to be honest i've told the story before and it's just like yeah just the beans was taken, so I <laughs> went for small beans. Thought that was fun. Did you always um, have your name out there as well? Like, like you were smallish beans the channel, but you always would you always pronounce yourself as you know? Hey guys, it's Joel. It, like, were those always two separate things, or or did it change over uh, time? Yeah, I used to. I, I I didn't really hide my name, sort of thing. I always said, yeah, it's Joel. So like, I didn't really introduce myself as Joel. I'd introduce myself as small beans okay. or smallish beans. 
Uh, but I like my friends all call me Joel because <laughs> saying smallish beans is hard to say. Uh, or like even like beans could like you know it's fine. Like I don't mind beans, but like it just sounds stupid. So I think people prefer saying Joel rather than hey beans or whatever sort of thing sometimes. So yeah, I I, I never really heard my name, but yeah, I never really like introduced myself as Joel. Yeah, because on like on Hermitcraft at least. Um having creators have like their screen name and then a, in a mm. different name they went by was new to us yeah um yeah you know so like you're you're kind of out I of know, the norm uh, in our world you know yeah well the only per other person i realize is joe like everyone else gets called <laughs> by their username right, right. and joe's is his username but yeah. it's still yeah. like yeah. It is no one else gets called by their real name i feel like yeah at all Think about and that's it. A, no, yeah. and, yeah. and the same thing that whenever we do anything with Jimmy, his name is yeah. Solidarity yeah. Gaming, and, and nobody calls nobody him calls that. him Solidarity. Mouthful, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Scott, Scott's yeah, well, dang Scott, long Scott, name. Scott. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Lizzie not is the him same. By his channel. Yeah, no one yeah. LD, shall we? Everyone yeah. calls her Lizzie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's probably more than I could think of, but yeah, it's just. <laughs> Sometimes you just got these stupid usernames. It's hard to go by sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> so why the, why so much Shrek in the beginning? Were you like a huge Shrek enthusiast? Not really. I just really like the soundtrack to Shrek 2. I think Shrek 2 is a brilliant movie. It's still, I still think it's a great movie. Shrek 1's okay, but Shrek 2, genuinely, like the scene at the end where uh, they're raiding the castle and the fairy godmother is singing. One oh. of the best bits of like, cinema ever. It's so good. Like, I love that. Uh, so yeah, it's just this, the soundtrack was so good to Shrek. And I was like, I need to like use these songs because they're just good. And then, yeah, just sort of went along that's, with it from that's then. That's the, I need a hero. I think that's yeah, the actual, yeah, yeah really, really so powerful. Good. Yeah. And then you rolled with it, your Minecraft skin, right? Was, yeah. Was, was Shrek <laughs> for, for the longest time. Way too long, way too long, to be honest. <laughs> so like, do you know, I actually spoke to Green about that like ages ago when I changed it because he w had his as uh, Link, wasn't it? Or like Zelda, from Zelda. His was originally Link from mm -hmm. Zelda. And I was like, how did you like make the switch? Did it like affect your video sort of thing? So I was a bit nervous, you know, you're saying all your thumbnails and it's like mm -hmm. how people recognize you. Uh, and he was like, yeah, it was fine, just do it. And I was like, I didn't want to stick with the Shrek branding because obviously if I was going to do merch or anything, I can't do Shrek merch. <laughs> I'm pretty sure DreamWorks wouldn't be too happy about that. So I was like, I need to change this up. And like, I kind of went, you know, human Shrek, but it's put the green streak and made it my own thing. Made the skin myself. Did a terrible job. Someone neatened it up for me and uh, made it a bit better. But yeah, I, I'm I'm not a huge Shrek fan. Just just so happened. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah. But you're huge into cinematography. You you said you you yes. You loved like uh, well, as a kid. You were just always into movies. You want to be in them. I. I don't I didn't ever really want to be in a movie I'd like I'd never want to act in a movie I just love watching movies like one of my favorite things to do is go to the cinema and uh yeah I I don't know I just like I've tried I, at one point I was like trying to go through every movie in the IMD, IMDB top 100 <laughs> uh that was like a goal and I've, I've watched most of those now I just really like watching like good films and like things it just makes you feel like I get like my whole family very like emotional and I will cry at any movie that's like <laughs> emotional in a way i'll cry more at happy movies than i do sad movies because it's just oh it's so nice it's so happy i love this so much i don't know, i just love the way movies make me feel and stuff and it's just always i don't know i'm you just know, always like i i, I, I want to see him and lizzie watching a movie together and just see which one's crying more during the oh movie. me it me 100 he, percent. lizzie doesn't like she's looking at him shaking her head <laughs> Oh, she's like it's a Lizzie commercial doesn't cry at anything yeah well she does cry at some stuff but like i cry way more than her like we went to this wedding recently of a like close friend of mine from when i was a kid uh and they was there was nine wedding speeches which was like crazy never heard that many speeches at a wedding before yeah and i think me my dad and my mum were crying at all of them sort of thing lizzie would tear up occasionally at one of them but me and my parents were just like <laughs> mess by the end of the day yeah but it was uh yeah we lizzie and me definitely have different reactions to movies especially happy stuff i don't know why it's about happy stuff i'm just like yeah this just makes me feel so nice happy too so let's, yeah let's pretend you said you didn't want to be in movies i i know i don't know if i buy that i think there's a part of you that would have liked to have at least been involved mm -hmm. i want you, you you did it you're in a movie you're walking down the red carpet for it's a red carpet event. Joel has got his sunglasses on. You got your fans right. just screaming at you. Are you going to turn to them and say, what's up, losers? 
Like, <laughs> I gotta know uh, more. I love this. I love this angle you have. With the, where did this start? Uh, and- <laughs> I see, I don't know even know where it started. To be honest, I just, I always just like take the mick out myself. I think it starts with just like my family. Like we all kind of just take the mick out of each other. Like it's how we communicate. We just like make jokes and like you know mess around and don't take ourselves too seriously sort of thing can have our serious moments like i said when it's something like emotional we all have our serious moments but yeah i've always since like with that with my friends as well i feel like it's a very british thing between like british boys in particular just to you know take the mick out of each other like you all poke fun at each other no one's like the punching bag everyone's the punching bag sort of thing (laughs) And everyone like takes the mick out themselves as well. And I feel like I do that a lot as well. Just take, and I thought, you know what? I take the mick out myself. Why not take a mick out of the audience as well? Like everyone, everyone, I feel like some people, obviously if it's the first time watching, like what is this sort of thing? But I feel like I deliver it in a sarcastic tone. Oh, that most people know that it's sarcastic. Some yeah. people don't get sarcasm, which is like, yeah, fair enough. You'd have to watch my videos. I don't, I don't mind. But yeah, I always just, there's a streamer that I watch that, plays old school runescape called boaty and i watch a few of his streams and he has his back and forth with his chat which is so entertaining where they will like take the mick out of him and he'll take the mick out of them back sort of thing it's like it's, it's like i, I don't want to get into the whole parasocial sort of stuff yeah. but like i feel like it, it's just like a fun way to interact no one's taking it seriously no if you don't take yourself seriously like i feel like i don't know it's just it's just a, a fun way to interact with people, I find. Yeah, no, I, I, I do it. Me and Jimmy are like constantly back and forth with that sort of stuff, taking the mick out of each other, sort of thing as well. So it's just ask, uh, so when when you came to Hermitcraft, did 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 that take uh, the new viewership of Hermitcraft? You're, you you had a, a lot of new people that were just learning mm. about you for the first time, and and you come out and and you have that kind of like sarcasm and uh, maybe maybe calling the audience stupid and things like that. Yeah. You know, it was obviously a joke, but <laughs> did did it catch some of the Hermitcraft viewers by surprise? Did you notice? Well, there's that one. There's that one post which I actually referenced in my video where someone asked if I have mania or something, and like. Why does he insult his video viewers all the time? And like, it's one of my favorite posts ever because I just read it and I was just like, "This is so funny!" Like, it's just like <laughs> it made me laugh so much. Like, because I don't like take it seriously, mm. sort of thing. Like, I find that this whole thing on YouTube, we make Minecraft videos, like, and I'm thirty, nearly thirty-one years old. I can't take myself seriously because, he, like, it, it's just so so stupid, really, when you think about what are we doing, like, playing these games and posting these videos. Like, it makes no sense. People seem to watch them and love them, and that's great. And But I, I don't know. It's just it's hard to take myself seriously. But, yeah, I feel like I was a bit nervous at first and maybe held back a little bit in the first few episodes of Hermitcraft and then sort of, you know, po- po- poked them a little bit and weaned them in. And occasionally I'll do it, occasionally I won't. It's just, you know, if I'm what I'm feeling like that day sort of thing. I think it's great. I, I, I think um, it, it makes your your videos unique to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's become a part of your brand, a part of your delivery, and it's it's something that it's uh, yep. it, it might take somebody by surprise the first time they watch you, but then it becomes very mm. endearing and it's like part of your shtick. And, and oh, yeah. I almost, I almost expect it now. You know what I mean? So many people are just like, I love this. This yeah. I love it when he insults me. I'm just like, right, I'll keep doing it then. I don't <laughs> understand why. They just, I think it just makes people like laugh sort of thing because, you know, they know what to expect. So if, if I, and I always tr- poke my fun at myself as well, like I said. So they, they know it's not like serious, which I think is it, the, the main point. But it also, it's uh it's an endearing thing because yeah. it's so very clearly sarcastic. You're obviously joking. But when you do that, it's sort of you letting them in into like the, yeah. the friendship bubble of I'm yeah. going to insult you. Like I like a trust circle. Yeah. 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 And, and Impulse used to tell people this about me when they would meet me for the first time is when I would start to riff them. He'd be like, the meaner he is to you, the more he he likes you, you know. And he'd yeah. be like, so don't be too nice to him because he's, he's gonna start hitting you. Because that's that's yeah. why yeah, I will I, I punch a lot when I when yeah. I like somebody. But no, that I um I can dig that. I can really dig that. Okay, so you're on Hermitcraft. You're flying. Yeah. You're obviously killing it. I got to talk oh. a little bit about your your building skills. You just oh, recently right. uh, got back from Japan. And yes, that was amazing. It's, yeah. There's clearly an influence, uh, a, a Japanese influence on what, what's looking going on in your build and everything like that. Can you step me through that process? Did you did you go to Japan and you were inspired, or you were inspired first? And like, how does this thing work for you in your building style? I don't know. I always try and 
like build from like a certain theme i felt like i I, have to, I always try every new series to try a style i haven't done before so like in empire season one i worked with a lot of red sandstone and like colorful roofs and like in this mesa biome and i just tried to let you know mess around with that and then in empire season two I did lots of quartz and like buildings floating in the sky and i just wanted to do something that was a bit different and that was sort of stand out and i just i i love working with like so many different colors and that's what i was definitely trying to go for and i i always like like a, like i like movies so much i always like trying to think of like cool movies and what looks like cool in movies like to go off uh and i saw uh i was watching big hero 6 again for some reason <laughs> and they have the san fran sokyo which is like san francisco and tokyo mixed together and i was like perfect i want to try and build like this and like when we got to the hill i was like oh amazing hilly san francisco wow. this is amazing um and uh but then i just kind of dropped the san francisco style because i tried building with it and i was just like it's very finicky and like doing it in like detail i was just like it's a lot of angles and it just didn't work sort of thing so i was like all right i'll go down the the, the Jap japanese theme still and maybe let's go a bit more cyberpunky because i saw some pictures of like which is like San Francisco, you know, which is kind of a little bit cyberpunk. It's futuristic, not cyberpunk per se, but I was like, maybe I'll just lean into the cyberpunk a bit more. And yeah, I, 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 I actually planned that before we went to Japan. I knew we were going to Japan. Um, and then I went out there and I just like saw all the buildings and stuff. And like Tokyo is absolutely crazy. Like I was like, this is, this is what I want to build. How can I build the entirety of Tokyo in Minecraft? <laughs> take hours uh but yeah like i just got i got inspired by in japan for sure and like we went to kyoto for the old style sort of buildings they have there it's a bit more traditional and uh yeah it was it wasn't really like it just sort of came out of nowhere i was like when i got invited like we had a it was like four or five months you might remember skiz like before like we actually got on the server so i had plenty of time to think of what i was going to do yeah. but also at the same time i was like i shouldn't over plan so i didn't build anything like until like the second episode, like that's when I started like thinking about this theme more properly sort of thing and messing around with, you know, the glow signs and all that sort of stuff and the banners, uh, which I've had to cut down on a lot because my PC <laughs> is really struggling right now. So <laughs> it might be partly my, my fault too there. Um, yeah, well, us next to each other is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, yeah. We've well, got the volcano <laughs> coming as well or whatever it's going to be. It's gonna so be... it's going to be a nightmare. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So the, the funny thing is like people would probably think because you and I did end up next to each other and we both have a cyberpunk flair to our builds, although different styling of them, which is a good mm. thing, I think. Um, we had no idea. Even no. even the day we were settling in on the mountain and we ended up being neighbors, that day we didn't know that we were both no, going to yeah. end up building cyberpunk style. Mm. And it was later, like a week or two later, when we started to build on our own that we looked at each other's builds going... Yeah. Like we message, wait, are you doing cyberpunk? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing cyberpunk too. Whoa! <laughs> and so like now, now we're like, okay, well, how can we tie these together a little bit? And um, mm. I, I think that uh, that's that's really nice. I think about Hermitcraft is one. It's yeah. like okay, okay, there's a bit of lack of planning there. I guess you could argue, but that I think gives it a more organic yes, nature. I agree. In the I know, way yeah. that we I collaborate, right? I think it's worked out perfectly. Yeah, it's so cool. Like, and the whole like mountain thing was like not really a plan either, really, was it? And then that's just sort of happened. I think that's gonna the place is gonna look so cool at the end. Like, we're only what? How many months have we been in this? I can't remember. It's like four we're months going, now. Going on four or so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's, like, there's I, plenty of time. Like, this is still very early game. Like, you spend yeah. the first couple months typically on a server like this, just getting the the farms and blocks and stuff that you need. Um, mm. somehow you've built so much with the limited resources you had. It's the shopping district. It's bad for me. I just go and buy everything I need now. Like I'm constantly shopper. broke. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's terrible. But yeah, I'm just constantly buying stuff. That's really helping. But uh, yeah, but we're getting yeah. we're getting to that part uh, of the season where um, blocks are in abundance and we can start to um, make all these like ideas come to life, even if they yeah. are very new. Like like you said, we we settled down on the mountain. We didn't really know. Uh, we just knew that the, the mountain looked cool, and we wanted to be in proximity yeah. with each other because we all like each other. And uh, and now it's starting to turn into this. Oh, what if we turn it into a volcano? Oh, what if we stretch our builds towards the inside to where we can all kind of look out each other's windows and, and see each other across the yeah. volcano and stuff. So like all these ideas are now starting to formulate and there's so much time 
in front of us for us to to bring this to fruition and like tie yeah. everything together in a really cool way. So I'm looking forward to, oh, to that be next so step. Cool, yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm excited for the volcano. It's going to look amazing. I know. So uh, did you do any drawing, painting as a kid, anything like that? You, you seems uh, gonna... I am awful at painting and drawing like genuinely can't draw like at all my dad is like used to be an art teacher so he's pretty good but mm -hmm. like i am appalling like can't draw anything to be honest like can't draw a face can't draw like a building anything just awful so uh something's <laughs> off here this doesn't make any sense so how do you build how so you, good how minecraft so, like, that's i don't know like i can think it up in my head i'm just like oh that's gonna look cool i i can't do like any photoshop skills like, i see like pearl and gem i think has done some as well where they draw out their builds i'm just like how the, how are you so good at drawing sort of thing i can't do that at all I don't know where it comes from. It just like I can just picture it pretty well in my head. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's gonna be cool. Also, just a lot of experimenting and messing around and thinking. Hmm, that's that's yeah, this could look cool. Yeah, his uh, I think his uh, familiarity with every single block in Minecraft gives him an edge, and you can see that mm. uh, it, when we do the guess that build, right? It's we all have yeah. just the five minutes, and 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 I mean, <laughs> nothing is as superior as my Spider Man. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dolphins, my favorite. Person, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I I played a lot of Minecraft, so I know like the blocks inside and out sort of thing. And I've yeah, I played. I I put a tweet out about how much I played last year. It was like it was over three thousand hours. That's wow. all I know. So yeah, not good. Not not healthy That's really. Crazy. But well, it seems uh, to be a place that you're very comfortable in. There's no question. Yeah. Uh, you're also <clears throat> one. One hell of a PvP or what do, you, <laughs> what do you prefer? Like, do you prefer the action stuff, the MCC stuff, or do you prefer to build or is it kind of split the difference? Uh, I prefer the building, but I'm also just incredibly competitive, like really competitive. So like when I first did the first few MCCs, I was like, oh, this isn't for me because I'm bad at this and I don't want to compete in it. And then CPK, and you might have heard of from MCC, is a friend of mine. And he made a tier list of like how good everyone is at MCC. And he put me in the just for fun section. <laughs> and that made me so mad that I went on like a training arc and I spent hours a day like on PvP servers learning how to PvP. Hours a day on like high pixel parkour housing practice and did so much of that. And I was like, I'm getting good at this to prove him wrong sort of thing so that's what wow. that's that's just where it came from i was like just out of spite i just was like <laughs> i need to be good at pvp but yeah i've always been like really competitive when it comes to like games like played like csgo uh, and got really like into that quite competitively and got pretty good at that as well and just i i enjoy like competing i was always into like lots of sports when i was a kid and stuff as well uh, until i got injured but yeah i uh i I'm just very competitive. That's all it is. Where anything I do, <laughs> never lost at Monopoly. That's another thing I've got. Wow. Never, never lost once. Yeah. Oh. I've only played about ten times in my life, but I've always. Oh, there you go. oh okay. now he, now he doesn't want to play anymore. That's yeah. what's happening, no. dude. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, my first ever game of Fortnite I played. Me and Ollie played, and we won. Uh, and I got one kill, which was the final kill, and Ollie got zero kills. Uh, so we won our first ever Joe's game, and I was like, that's it, never playing again. Never play touching that now. 100% win record. There you go. Those All right, that's fun settled. Like if there's that. ever a, another Hermitcraft hang of any kind, we're playing Monopoly and taking this guy down a peg. Oh, no. Ruin his record, his uh, flawless record. I'll make some good trades, trust me, trust me. <laughs> So you've done you've done a lot of MCCs actually, right? Like you you got involved yeah. with MCC when it was very early stages, and by now it's, first ever one. Yeah. How many have they had? Like forty or something events total somewhere around Including there. Including like the other ones, yeah, probably. It's, yeah, probably yeah, it's, to fought, yeah. It's been a lot, and you've competed in a, in a lot of them, so you've got a chance to uh, go from just for fun to. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen you put in the S tier, but you got to be right on the cusp, no, no. right? Like, I, I like, think it's, everyone says A tier, which is like below. There's like an A plus people put in as well. I think I'm like on the brink of that, maybe. Yeah, like you, you're the... consistently uh, in most recent events, uh, you know, somewhere in the top twenty. I think you have broken top ten before. If I'm I not got mistaken, top ten last event. Yeah, there you and go. I got. I got in scuffed, which is, you know, the one which was like, everything was scuffed. I got first individual in that as well. Wow. I got nine kills in the final game. So <laughs> a thousand coins in the final game alone. So yeah, it was kind of crazy. That's amazing. That's amazing. So um, 
what is it? So you said you're you're ultra competitive. I, I've heard stories. Uh, I didn't actually see this, but I heard stories that you were so competitive that you'd get frustrated and turn off your webcam. Is that is uh, that, is that, is that, is that, has that happened? It, no, I wouldn't turn it off. It's more my webcam is so bad it would just freeze. Okay. It would overheat. So I didn't turn it off out of frustration. Uh, okay, so people uh, people assumed it was on purpose because yeah. you're getting so frustrated. Okay, I, I, <laughs> I don't really get like I try and keep I try and keep positive during MCC. <laughs> like in other games where I get I get frustrated, like I can never. I used to play Overwatch for a bit, and I can't play that anymore because it was just drive me insane because it's like very much like if your team was bad, you were bad sort of thing. Whereas yeah. I quite like Counter Strike because if it was like if you are good, you can carry your team. Uh, so yeah, like I, I also used to play FIFA, uh, which is like the soccer game sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And they had this online mode and that is the most infuriating game you'll <laughs> ever play because it's just like the most random stuff will happen and you'll lose in the last minute or just rubbish will happen. And it, I had to stop playing that for my mental health because I was like, this is taking years <laughs> off my life. I can't play this anymore. Uh, but yeah, like I, I, I've never really got super frustrated in MCC. I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't, say, like, I, I don't, we, we played together on a team. I think it was, uh, me, you, Filza and Sneeg. Oh yeah. I think that was, was a great team. time. That one. And uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember, uh, you ever having like a moment of frustration in that. We just, we just were laughing, uh, and just having oh, a good time yeah. the entire event. And that's why it's like one of my favorite teams ever. <laughs> Yeah, it was a really fun one. That that was my, that was one my stream just didn't work. I remember that was oh. like I was got, I was like getting annoyed at that, but then I was just like I'll just stop streaming and just you know play with you guys sort of thing and focus on like having a good time sort of thing. And I had a, I think I had a I normally my thing for MCC right is before every MCC I'll either have like a beer or a gin and tonic. <laughs> And that will give me like a little bit of confidence to like, you know, yeah. like feel good about like playing sort of thing. And I feel like I've told other people like my teammates are like, you should just have like one, if you drink, have one alcoholic beverage before <laughs> it gives you enough where your reactions are still good, but you get that little bit, you know, like of liquid luck sort yep. of thing. So uh, yeah, I, I think for that one though, I had about two or three because I was like, I'm not streaming, it's fun, but it's just a mess yeah. around sort of thing. Got a little bit too confident in some of them, but yeah, like I, it's... It is really fun, MCC, and I, I I don't like take it too seriously. Although I am competitive, I'll never take it too seriously because I'm like we're here to like entertain, <clears throat> have fun. Yeah, it's my. There's no nothing if you win apart from glory. Who cares really? <laughs> Let's just mess around, have fun, have a good time, try and like come up with some funny moments, sort of thing. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. I I had um I started. Getting into MCC, I got into MCC late, and I am I am not a, a gamer by any means. Like I, I, it's just for fun for me, and I'm not good at PvP, not good at parkour, not not good at most of the things that MCC are about. And uh, after I didn't perform that well, I started to get that that same kind of bug. It's kind of like if, mm. if CPK put me in that tier, I would have been the same way as you. Uh, and I did the same thing. I went on a little training arc, and and then the next MCC, I was so about being good. That I was, yeah. I was like the worst Restful. entertainer ever. I was, I don't think I said five <laughs> words on the entire stream because I was just trying to win and be the best, yeah, yeah. And, and I was nowhere near it. Like, and I realized at that time, you know what? I need to just relax and have fun with this. And it's it completely yeah. changed the game for me after that. So I know exactly. You, you just had the one with uh, Tango and Efo. Was Efo on your team? Right? Yeah, and yeah. Skiz was team you ties. with us. Well, yeah. Team yeah. Have you seen that? Efo's on like a little training arc himself. He's on the MCC Island, like doing parkour. <laughs> I'm pretty much like, I'm pretty sure he's spending about four or five hours a day on it at the moment. I everybody's think he's getting a everybody's been wondering what? where the Etho videos have been. He's on uh, yeah, training arc. MCCI. <laughs> he's just like, ah. I think, I'm not sure like when the next MCC is or what if he's in it, but he's coming back with a vengeance sort of thing, I feel like. Well, we, I'll tell you, I've only done the one MCC and I, it was a, just an unbelievable amount of fun. And I mm. liked uh, doing some of the MCCI and then also the practice, the practice server or whatever. But I, the competitive stuff, I've seen parts. Uh, uh, I've seen this come out of Joel. I've seen it come out of Impulse. I've seen, mm. and I can recognize it because I, I used to be big time like that when I was younger. And I've, I dropped that, but it started to peek its head when I was doing the ace race yeah. on the island. And I just couldn't, <laughs> I just, anytime I can shave off another 10th of a second, it was this euphoric feeling. And, and I just, and I, and I, and it was like, I was starting to get drawn into that trap. 
but it was so much fun playing MCC and, and meeting, you know, we played against Joel at one point and obviously he freaking destroyed me. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, team uh, ties was not team strong. Ties yeah, was, you we, guys <laughs> had a bit of a struggle. I think that was the worst balanced team in the entire it event. It was. Uh, yeah, in any canon event. Yeah, 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 for yeah. Sure. It was, but it was top tier fun, that's for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it looked like it. Yeah. I'll tell you, I've seen two specific instances I can think of where I saw Joel's competitive nature is just so, so good. Um, one was in the life series. He took me out of, uh, I think this last one, it was the, 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 this last one or the one before, but I basically, I was about, I was on my last life or whatever you want to call it. I don't even remember. I fell into a hole, but before this oh, yeah. happened, I was hunting somebody else and <laughs> Joel appears and I have, ne- I mean, the darkness in his voice He's like, he says, he's a, he says to me, I hear you're low on hearts. Like I can see <laughs> it was almost like his Minecraft skin changed and became demonic, like demonic. And I was like, I'm, I'm hunting somebody else. And he pulls out that crossbow and I'd like block it instantly. I'm like, this guy sucks. And I fall into a <laughs> hole and I'm like, is this how it ends? And he gets on top of the axe. He's all, this is how it ends. And he just takes me out, dude. And it was so uh. funny. But that planted a little seed in my mind that I was like, oh, Joel just took me out of the series. I'm I'm going to find a way to get back at him. And I feel like I, <laughs> I righted the ship when, oh, yeah. when I killed you on Hermitcraft that took you out Undemized. of the running. Yeah, yeah. dude. That was, and that, that was good. That, that was the second I did not, time. Ex- <laughs> I did not suspect anything dude, there. Like, I you felt so fully, bad. like, trick me. I felt no, so like, bad. It's like, so <laughs> fair play. I didn't care about winning, really. It makes good content. I feel like that's the thing with the live series. And there's a bit of a difference in my head when i'm playing mcc in the live series mcc i'll take a little bit more seriously live series like people are like well have you never won jogs you know everyone says like i'm good at pvp or whatever but i have so much more fun just you know oh, yeah messing around yep. i don't care about winning like when like in what was it the, not the reason one limited life the clock one yep. like me and jimmy had the bad boys thing and like we oh, were just like I, we died so many times, stupid deaths there. Like nice. just, but they were so funny. Digging down because we're like, that's what bad boys will do. We'll dig straight down, <laughs> and uh, died in lava instantly. And we're just like, we're the bad boys. That's what we do, <laughs> sort of thing. But yeah, like I have so much like fun, just like messing around. I really like in the live series, especially just value you know the funny moments rather than winning. I don't care about winning. Like it's more about making the funny content. Like I'll happily die in my episode if it means you know it's you know, a good video. Good yeah. Content, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, sometimes the viewers can get into the competitive piece of it, which, cause there is a winner. Um, and, and forget about the fact that we're actually there to make entertainment entertainment first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it's more about the moments that we create and, uh, you know, the laughs and, and the storylines, you know, like you guys came up with the bad boys and, um, yeah. you know, after I had spent, what, 15, 20 minutes trying to get some cows to, to gather to breed and you guys come <laughs> yeah. along and, and just kill my cow. I, I like, yeah, I was actually a little upset with the bad boys, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, no, that was a great, that was, it a was great, great content. That's great content. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, Sometimes that's, you gotta be the bad guy to yeah. make a good yeah, that's right. I'm not afraid to be the bad guy. So sort of no, thing. it was brilliant, and it was funny because it was like it it didn't cross over into real life. The frustration right, right, didn't cross right. over, but but it, it was knocking on the door, right? And so <laughs> yeah. it's so funny because yeah. you got the cow, and I'm like, oh, that took forever, dude. You're all hold on. He's been killing cows. I'm pretty Joel. You can't. He did it. Like I was just saying. Then he did. You know what he did after that? He just left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did feel a bit bad about that. one. I do do remember that. But at the same time, I was like, "That's so funny." It I was yeah. so <laughs> funny, dude. I think that's what makes oh. the the um, the life series group so good is because we all have that understanding that content comes first, right? Like there's something yeah. personal. Um, you know, it's not, we're, we're not there to just win. It's not just a, no, a battle. Yeah. If, it, if it were there to win, everybody would just start killing each other, you know, and well, straight away. There'd be no good content. It'd be boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I that, mean, like PVP is so boring on the live yep. series. I find the best kills are always like, you know, the TNT traps or yep, absolutely, you know, stupid absolutely. stuff like that. They're Which you've been amazing fun. at, you know, all your traps. Yeah, of course. really like, good, really good. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, 
That, uh, that kill on the cow, that was the catalyst. That was the first yeah. domino that resulted in the bread bridge bombing. Because like when <laughs> you, it. yeah, uh, like it was one yeah. of those things and in, in impulse knows it's about me, right? As soon as like I've been wronged, it doesn't go away. I will, I will yeah. even the score, but I will over even the score. <laughs> and so he killed the cow and I'm all, well, log that one away. Something big is going to happen. <laughs> and then you guys did the bread bridge and I'm like, I'm going to destroy the entire yeah. thing. <laughs> Oh, it's so stupid. The bread bridge was so stupid. I don't even know. I, I came, you know, the idea of the bread bridge was just that I was the boogeyman. And I told Green and uh, Jimmy that I was the boogeyman. And, you know, uh, B dubs and I think it was Scar and Cleo had their little base opposite. And we're like, we need to get away across so I can, like, launch a TNT minecart at them. What what can we do? Let's make a bridge. Let's let's fill it full of bread. That's great, <laughs> right? Sorted. And then I got the double kill with uh, the minecart and got my boogeyman thing. So it worked out really well. But it was just like started so stupid and then just continued on. Bad boys bread bridge just sounded funny. <laughs> Bad Boys Bread bad, Bridge. Bad, that that's hard. Bad Boys Bread. All right, so check it out. So here's the deal. There there are still more things I want to ask you. Uh, and right. I, I want to, I think, let's take a break and let's 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 uh, pick it up in just a yeah. bit here. I want to dive into, he touched on it and we'll, we'll cover it in the next uh, session. He got, it's, uh, there was sports and there was an injury. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about, about where Joel thought he was going to be when he was a young one, where Joel's going to be. At that. <laughs> I like to do this. I like Dude to Dude spent explore. over half his life on YouTube. I, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm telling you. There's, there's there's more to unpack here. So if you wouldn't mind sticking around for a few minutes, we'll take a small break and we'll be That's back. Good. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Joel. And uh, we'll, we'll see you soon.